Now, is it me or is the battle over who will supply your indigestion starting to get real? I want to welcome back to the show Michael Moss, New York Times investigative reporter. He's the author of the best-selling Salt, Sugar, Fat, How the Food Giants Hooked Us. And he wrote the cover story in this week's New York Times magazine entitled Broccoli's Image Makeover, What Will Make Us Want It? Good luck with that, broccoli people. So, Michael, <laughs> does this remind you of the cola wars back in the 80s at all? It sure does. I mean, you know, one of the secrets in the cola wars is that when Pepsi attacked Coca-Cola, and we all remember that incredibly brilliant Michael Jackson commercial, oh, yeah. new, age, new Generation, the secret inside the industry was that it was a big joke because both the sales of both companies rose when they attacked each other. And that's why I thought the ad agency that came up with this idea of selling broccoli, you know, when they attacked kale, and wait a minute, we don't want to hurt kale sales here, but that's what the food giants know is that when they sort of spar with each other, it's a bloodless sparring on their part, and we are the ones who eat more of everything. Is you know, it generates buzz for the whole the whole industry. You mean you and I right now have fallen <laughs> into their trap? Cancel you the know. segment. All right, well, <laughs> moving on, the strategy does seem a bit obvious, but the question, will customers view the big king as anything other than a Big Mac ripoff? And does it matter? Do they care? Are people going to be upset that this is just a ripoff of the Big Mac? I think Burger King is betting that their customers like their products, and they're going to come in, and what they're looking to do is generate more excitement for people who already like Burger King. I think this is probably their main target. And the, the industry called this sort of newness, and it's line extension. So when you walk into a Burger King now that I, you know, I did today, there's this like lineup of hamburgers. It's just sort of endless almost, as well as the new lower calorie fries, which I tasted, by the way, for the first time today. And? You know, I have to say, look, I mean, I'm no restaurant critic. But I have to say, my reaction was actually wanting more of those, which may be sort of self-defeating from a diet uh, perspective. Yeah, and no, I could see that. I have to say, though, I don't understand why everybody hasn't just copied McDonald's fries. It's like, okay, they won the fry thing. Their fries are better. Just steal their fries. But I, I want to I take issue with one thing you said. I mean, I understand that the, the sparring just creates buzz and everybody's sales go up. But... They are playing hardball to a degree, right? A few days ago, McDonald's dropped Heinz as its supplier of ketchup after it hired a former Burger King executive. So, right. I mean, there is some real ugliness going on here behind the scenes. There is, as there was with Pepsi and Coca-Cola. But you got to remember that Coca-Cola executives said, look, if Pepsi hadn't existed, we would have invented them. Because, again, they're going after share of stomach and excitement <laughs> for their brands and an, you know, an ingenious advertising campaign can generate that. And lastly, Michael, Taco Bell has the Doritos Locos Tacos. Wendy's has pretzel burgers. KFC has the Go Cup. I mean, these gimmicks exist because, generally speaking, they work, right? Yeah. And some of what we're seeing here is sort of the marriage of grocery-type products, snack foods, with the fast food industry, and believe me, that is a marriage made in heaven because it's combining the allures and the, and the marketing power of both of those industries. If you're on a diet, look out. All right, this segment brought to you by the makers of insulin. Thank you very much, Michael <laughs> Moss. I appreciate it. Coming up next in the